Hello, Pertwee fan here to talk about the sixth Doctor, Colin Baker. Now, I basically watched Doctor Who since I was a little baby. I missed the Armageddon Factor by a few months, but the first Doctor Who story on during my lifetime was Destiny of the Daleks. I don't remember watching the fourth, the late fourth Doctor and the fifth Doctor's eras when they were on, but I was told I watched uh, watched those with my dad along with a load of other programmes as, as a viewer. I do remember the, the Colin Baker era very well. I don't remember the Twin Dilemma when it was on. I mean, I've seen it recently and I still don't remember too much of it. Not the best story. Always at the bottom of the, when the Doctor Who magazine do the, 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 the rankings on the stories, it always comes out near the very bottom, out of a 200 plus now. Um, but I, I remember everything from Attack of the Cybermen onwards incredibly vividly. So. That uh, first full season of Collins, I was at age six. Uh, I remember Attack of the Cybermen. Um, the thing that I remember most of all from Collins' two full seasons, actually, is the cliffhangers and what an impression those make on the mind of a five, six-year-old. Um, and actually having to wait a whole week to find out what will happen next. The ones that stick out, in fact, are... The End of Revelation of the Daleks Part 1, where the, the grave of the Doctor falls on the Doctor. Uh, that was quite alarming. Then the end of Part 2 of the Trial of the Time Lord, when uh, the Doctor says it really could be the end, and he's surrounded by enemies both sides, and you think, how on earth is he going to get out of that one? Uh, things like that, really. Um, going back to his, his first full season, I mean, obviously the weakest story was Time Lash. Uh, but then you get some great stories like Vengeance on Varos, which I think is quite highly regarded among fans. Uh, Mark of the Rani I love. Okay, the Master doesn't get a brilliant role in it, but the Rani, played by Kate O'Mara, is absolutely fantastic. What a wonderful villainess. So, I, I, I love that story. Um, I think my favourite from the season is The Two Doctors. I've always adored it and I've watched it many, many times. And I think Patrick Troughton and Fraser Hines are brilliant. They get a lot to do because they, they, uh, Fraser didn't get to do much in the Five Doctors, but JNT said come back, and he did two years later for the Two Doctors. Uh, I just adore all the location filming and the Two Doctors and everything about it, the Sontarans. It's just one I absolutely adore. And then Revelation of the Daleks, I love. There's a lot going on. The Doctor doesn't always get a lot to do. The, you've got the crazy DJ played by uh, Alexi Sale. Um, I, I do like that story. Um, of course, the thing you have to remember about Colin Baker's era is he he did it for about three years. Uh, he, he basically his first story was at the end of Peter Davison's last season, so that was eighty four. Then there was a very long gap. He had his first full season eighty five. Then the BBC pulled the plug on the series for eighteen months, known as the hiatus. So basically, there was no Doctor Who on for eighteen months. Uh, then it came back in September 1986, and it was the 14-part story, The Trial of the Time Lord. Uh, the Doctor was put on trial for his life. The prosecutor was the Valiard. And it reflected the fact that the programme itself was on trial, and, and we, know, we now know, in retrospect, um, it was living off borrowed time, and it only lasted another three years of Sylvester McCoy. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Trial of a Time Lord. Absolutely adore it. A wonderful story. Uh, the first four episodes by Robert Holmes, that wonderful underground world, the, the wonderful uh, Queen Katrika, played by the late J Joan Sims. Uh, Minds Warp. Oh, that last episode I remember so vividly and, and seeing Perry uh, with a bald head and having a mind transplant and that was just so alarming to watch that and Wow, it, uh, <laughs> it still has quite an effect on me now, watching that, and, um, yes. Um, Terror of the Vervoids, another Pip and Jane Baker story, a sort of uh, Agatha Christie, a sort of murder mystery type sort of story. Uh, enjoyed that. Um, I remember very well Mel's scream at the end of part one, and the scream was pitched in a way that it actually uh, blended into the closing credits beautifully. Um, just going back a bit, the, the, the opening and closing titles, as a five, six year old, it was wonderful seeing those opening titles and the, the, the background of space, but all the multi-colours in, and it was it reflected really the, the multi-colours on the, the Six Doctors coat, as a five, six year old, 
I always wanted to wear that coat and when I was 30, just very recently, um, I actually put one together. I didn't sew it myself but I, I had a lot of input into it being made and I'm wearing the coat here with, with the t-shirts. So, um, going back to Trial of a Time Lord, um, yeah, he finished with, um, oh, it was the longest Doctor Who story ever, uh, 14 episodes long. Uh, surpassing, beating, of course, the 1969 story, The War Games, that was ten episodes, and Dalek's Master Plan in the, the 60s, mid-60s roughly, uh, that was 12 episodes. This was 14 episodes, uh, so it's very ambitious, but it was split into three production blocks, of course, and four different stories. The last story was the uh, two-part story, The Ultimate Foe, or Trial of a Time Lord 13-14, if to be absolutely correct, um, filmed at the Gladstone Pottery Museum, uh, which I live quite near to. Um, very imaginative, lots of great stuff going on there in a Robert Holmes' episode, and then of course Pip and Jane Baker wrote the last one. And then uh, a special word for Michael Jaston, who played the Valley Yard, absolutely terrific. Um, I, I just love the scenes in the courtroom with, with him and the Doctor and their scenes together. The, the two actors sparked off each other so well, and I, I, I love that. Um, the thing about Trial of a Time Lord is the a lot of the cliffhangers, this is at JNT's insistence, John Nathan Turner, the then producer, uh, is that the, the episode ended with the close-up of the Doctor's face, and we had this, I think, just on every single cliffhanger. And it was very dramatic, but, I mean, look at that cliffhanger in Terror of the Vervoids about being sucked into the black hole of Tarsarus. Um, and then that was dramatic in itself, but then it, it kind of loses its impacts as a cliffhanger when you go on to a close-up of the Doctor's face, but I'm not, I'm not going to grumble because I just hold an enormous amount of affection for the, the Sixth Doctor's era, as brief as it was, on the television. Um, but of course, uh, the Sixth Doctor has been uh, very much part of Big Finish since 1999, audio CDs officially uh, licensed by the BBC, or made by the BBC, and Colin Baker's gone on to show what a brilliant doctor he is. Um, you know, in the last uh, his last season, Trial of a Time Lord, the doctor has softened a lot more, he'd become quite harsh. The regeneration had had quite a profound effect on him. Um, yeah, Colin Baker really does come into his own in, in the Big Finish audios and he just shows, you know, if he had stayed seven years or whatever it was, or even just a few years longer, he showed what his Doctor could have done and his Doctor really developed. Um, you know, Colin Baker was at the BBC, you know, you know in, in playing Doctor Who at quite a turbulent time in the show's history, so uh, I don't think you can blame Colin Baker, because Colin Baker's a wonderful actor, he's very intelligent, he's very witty, uh, he goes to a lot of conventions, signings, he's there for the fans, he gave and continues to give the show a tremendous amount of support, and it was on my mind to, to do this a little overview of the Six Doctors era, because he's recently been on ITV, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, and I don't normally watch that, but I've actually watched um, every single episode, and, and Colin has just been wonderful in it, and he's never argued with anybody, he's never raised his voice, he's been very pleasant, um, I'm just impressed by his whole approach to it. So there we go, the Sixth Doctor's era. I know it very well, I know it a lot better than the others, so I've been able to, to keep talking and talking without going, er, uh, or uh, Tom Baker, he doesn't do that, he goes, ah. But that's, um, we've got more Tom Baker ones coming up. I'm sorry there hasn't been a video for a long time. I'm going to, to close this now uh, with my bookcase in the background. I thought we'll have an intellectual background for a change to match quite an intellectual doctor and an intellectual, intellectual, it's easy for me to say, uh, actor, hmm. Doctor Who mug, Colin Baker, so from Pertwee fan, bye! Ha ha, yes, I'm going, hee <laughs> hee!